Hey, what's up? Stephanie, the English coach here from EnglishFullTime.com. In this video, we are going to talk about fast speech and specifically the sounds that change and are eliminated when you start speaking quickly. Now, when I say fast speech, I'm not talking about speaking, you know, super, super, super fast. I'm actually talking about speaking regularly, the way native speakers speak. So what happens is English is not a phonetic language, okay? Words are not pronounced exactly the way that they're written, and especially in everyday conversation and casual speech, even when you're in a business meeting, okay? Just because this is fast speech doesn't mean you can't use words like this in a business setting. So if you wanna learn how to sound more like a native English speaker, this video is going to be really helpful. It's also probably going to be frustrating because you're gonna learn and realize so many things you didn't learn before, and you're gonna feel like, oh my gosh, I have so much more to learn. Don't worry, you'll get there. Anyhow, before I begin, I want to say a couple things. One, I'm from California, so I speak with an American accent. This video is going to be really helpful to you if you're trying to learn how to speak more with an American accent. If you're trying to learn British English or Australian English, I honestly don't think a lot of the things that I'm going to say will apply to the kind of English that you're trying to learn. Okay, so bear that in mind if you decide to watch this video. And last thing before we get started, I just wanna let you guys know that you can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, and of course my website. So I'll put all those links in the description. With that said, let's get into it. Okay, so fast speech, what is it? It's not speaking quickly. It's not speaking super fast, okay? Fast speech, when I say fast speech, I'm literally just referring to the way native speakers speak English. It's not necessarily fast. It's just that we tend to run words together. And by doing that, we end up eliminating sounds and changing sounds. So I wanna go over some examples of that in this video so that you guys can be more aware of it when you're hearing English. The problem is that you probably start learning English with textbooks and grammar books. So you see how a word is written and then you think, okay, that's how it should be pronounced. But that's not the case because English is not a phonetic language. So words are not usually pronounced the way that they're written. And then when you include fast speech into this, everything gets more complicated on top of that. So let me give you some examples of what fast speech is and how we do it. So for example, the question, what are you doing later? I never ask like that. When I'm talking to my friends, I do not say, what are you doing later? Because I have to put so much effort into that entire sentence, it's exhausting, right? So what will I say? I'll say, hey, what you doing later? Okay, that is an example of fast speech. And you can learn how to do this just by imitating me, right? So instead of saying, what are you? It reduces down to whatcha, whatcha. Okay, and even that ya, yeah, like that's not even how we say it. I'm over pronouncing it just so you can hear that it's not you, but it's so reduced, okay, it's so reduced that it doesn't even sound like ya yeah in the sentence. What you doing later? Whatcha, whatcha. Do you hear that? Okay, it's crazy, right? And then doing becomes doing, and then later, what you doing later? What you doing later? Hey, what you doing later? Okay, another example that I have for you. The question, where is he at? Hey, where is he at? Where is he at? It sounds like where's he at, right? Where's he at? Where's he at? And that's because in fast speech, we often eliminate the H's. Where's he at? Or did you give it to him? Did you give it to him? I'm eliminating the H there. Did you give it to him? Did you give it to him? Did you give it to him? And then the you, I'm not even saying you. I could say, did you? Did you give it to him? Did you? Okay, so this is one of the reasons why English gets so complicated for people. We reduce things down so much that we eliminate sounds and sounds change completely so that what we're saying is not even what you're reading or what you think you're hearing. So. In this lesson, I just wanna encourage you guys to really pay attention to what you hear. If you want to sound like a native speaker, you're gonna to have to learn how to do all of these reductions that we do and eliminations. But here's the thing, there are patterns for everything. So if you really wanted to, you could study the patterns like, okay, when do native speakers eliminate the H's and why? When does did and you change to did you and when does it not, okay? You can really get into the nitty gritty of all of this, or you could just listen and listen for the patterns, hear them, and then incorporate them into your own speech, okay? 
Let's go over some more examples. Okay, another question we can ask is how did it go? How did it go? But I never say, how did it go? I say, hey, how'd it go? How'd it go? <laughs> now this is crazy because I'm not even saying how, I'm saying ha, ha, had it. Had it go. <laughs> All right, no, now I'm getting a little bit crazy with the pronunciation there. But seriously, I really just ask people, I say, hey, how'd it go? How'd it go? How'd it go? If I try to break that apart for you and show you each individual piece, the actual sound becomes contorted, right? Because if I say, first we start by saying ha, and then did, and then go, all of the sounds are now contorted because I lengthened them in order to slow it down and show you. And then here's what happens. That's no longer the true sound. That's still not what I'm saying. So by extending it and trying to slow it down for you to understand it more, it's still not what I'm saying. So you really have to just listen and train your ear to hear the fast speech and then to incorporate it, okay? And your tongue will learn how to do this quickly, but just listen and repeat, right? How'd it go? Hey, how'd it go? Hey, you went to an interview yesterday, how'd it go? All right, another question, what do you mean? I never ask it like that. Hey, what do you mean? That's just too complicated, right? So I say, no, what do you mean? What do you mean? Okay, again, I'm, I struggle to slow this down because then it's no longer authentic. Hey, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Another one, can I go? Can I go? We don't usually ask it like that. The can gets reduced and it becomes can, something like that, okay? Listen, can I go? Can I go? Hey, can I go with you? Hey, where are you guys going? Can I go? I'm not saying can. I'm totally eliminating the vowel sound altogether. It becomes can, can. The C sound and then the n, can. Okay, again, when I slow it down, it's not gonna sound like it usually sounds, so I just have to say it fast. Hey, can I go? Can I go? All right, how are you guys doing? Are you hanging in there with me? Because I have several more examples for you, right? I know these aren't easy. The next one, how is it going? Okay, I don't say, how is it going? I say, hey, how's it going? How's it going? Now, you can think of it like, how's it going? But with the pattern of the speech, it actually sounds like, how is it going? Hey, how's it going? Okay, or with the going, I can also eliminate the G and say, hey, how's it going? How's it? How's it? How's it going? Another one is when we say, give it to me. Give it to me. I can just say it like that. Hey, will you will you give it to me? Give it to <laughs> I can't, oh my gosh, I'm trying to give the example and I can't even do it because I, I start thinking about it too much. That's the other thing with fast speech. It's like something you don't even think about, right? but you will have to think about it to practice it and then to get it. Okay, so let's say my sister has something and I say, hey, where is that thing? And she says, oh, it's over here. And then I can say, oh, would you give it to me? Would you give it to me? So now, would you, instead of would you, it becomes would you, would you, would you give it to me? Okay, and then the you gets reduced also. You guys, I just had to take a moment to say that this is complicated, isn't it? Would you give it to me? It, does it like, does it sound like a completely different language? Does it still sound like English? Because this is how I talk. Like this is how I speak with native English speakers, right? Anyhow, let me give you another example of an H that gets eliminated, okay? I have to go to the store. I have to, okay, so we can say have to, but we also eliminate the H a lot of times. I'll just say, yeah, I have to go to the store later. I have to go, I have to go, I have to go to the store later. Okay, I'm literally saying I have to. I have to go to the store later. I'm not saying to also, did you notice that? The to in English gets reduced almost every time to a t, right? I have to go to the store later. And then go to becomes go to, go to. I have to go to the store later. So at this point, you might be feeling overwhelmed, like, oh my gosh, Stephanie, there, 
are just so many different ways that English speakers reduce sounds. What do we do? How can we learn this? Well, a lot of you are gonna want to break this down, study each sound individually, and learn how the speech is connected, and learn all the rules for this, but I'm telling you that there are hundreds of rules, and it's gonna take you a very long time to learn them, unless you're some kind of genius or something. What I recommend is that you just listen more to English and repeat things as you hear them. Close your eyes, don't think about how things are spelled, just close your eyes and listen to what you're truly hearing because if you really listen, you'll notice that we eliminate sounds. You'll notice that we change sounds completely. And then if you wanna sound like a native speaker, you have to incorporate those changes as well. Don't stick to pronouncing things exactly as you read them in a textbook because then you will sound like a textbook, okay? And people just don't talk like that. That's not natural. All right, I have a few more examples for you. The next one is, where did you get them? Where did you get them? I actually said this the other day to my nephew, but I didn't say it like that. I say, oh, where'd you get them? Where'd you get them? So listen, where did you became where'd you, where'd you? And then get them became get them, get them. Where'd you get them? So I'm not even saying them, it's crazy, right? Now the word of a lot of the time reduces to uh, right? So I just said a lot of the time, I said it well, but that's not usually what I say. I'll say a lot of the time, a lot of the time, a lot of, a lot of the time. All right, now I have another sentence with how. I could say, I don't know how to do it, but instead of saying that, I just say, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. How to do it, how to do it. And I don't know is, I don't know. It's not even I, it's ah, like, I don't know how to do it. I don't know, I don't know. Do you know? <laughs> and then there where I said, do you know? I didn't say do, I said D. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? And my final tips about reducing sounds, changing them, eliminating them, is for individual words. You'll notice that in American English, we don't say for a lot, like it's for her, we say fur. Hey, yeah, it's for her, it's for her. And we also don't say the word well. We don't say, well, I could call you later. We say, well, I could call you later. Well, 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 I could call you later. And then other words like all right, we don't really say all right. We just say all right, all right, all right. Basically we eliminate the L. All right, you guys, that's it. I gave you a ton of examples in this video. Again, I know it can be really frustrating, but the point of this video was not to teach you every single reduction and deletion that we make in fast speech. It was just to make you more aware of certain changes that you will hear so you can start listening better, learning them, and incorporating them into your own speech so you can sound more like a native English speaker. Anyhow, that's it for this video. If you guys want a free guide on 79 words, that you still say wrong. These are words that are very, very simple, everyday common words, but a lot of non-native English speakers mess them up. If you guys want this guide, go ahead and grab it in the description of this video. You'll get the link, you'll be able to download it and listen to the audio file right away. And hopefully you're not making any of these mistakes with these simple words. All right, you guys, that's it, and I'll see you in another video. Bye.